Here is a demonstration of the SarkNet Mark 1A rotator with the GPredict software lashed up. I finished my rotator today and I got all the software loaded up so we're going to try tracking a uh, satellite here. So we're going to go to SO67 and we're going to tell him to track that puppy. Now he's swinging around to where he's going to pick him up. Hopefully you can see the numbers here in this display. And when this actually uh, gets right, I will uh, speed this up. A homemade rotator, homemade antenna. The only thing I, I have left is, uh, uh, what do you call it, a radio. I need to adjust a couple of those... Uh, cross guys obviously so you can see he is now tracking SO67 and I'm gonna let this run and uh, until the end of the pass now it's gonna start oh can I tell SO67 I don't have him up on the uh, we expect loss of signal at uh, in nine minutes and fifty one seconds. So I I will shortly I will speed this up so that you can uh, watch the rotator as it does its tracking thing. Now this rotator uh, has a half a degree. If it gets within half a degree, it's happy. So we've told, I don't know if you can see it here. You probably can't see it. Tolerance. Can you see the tolerance number? It's way on the bottom here, the tolerance number. Now that one says five. I have to keep changing that. I'm going to have to go, uh, I'm going to have to find out where you change that permanently because my, my tracker has a tolerance of a degree. Actually, it's tolerance of a half a degree. So what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll bring that back down to half a degree. And that's the reason that the, uh, I don't know if you can see that as well, but that's the reason, come on, down, 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 give me half a degree, four, three, two, one, okay. Um, that's the reason why this dot is not centered in this circle. The circle is the, is the, uh, is guess at what the, what the width of the, uh, the, uh, antenna can do and so you can see here it's 157 versus 153 now I don't know if I shut the tracking off let me just double check it yeah I did I shut it off slightly so when you mess around with that stuff it screws it up now you can see it's 153 something versus 152 something so we're within a half a degree and now he's actually doing the tracking And you can see where the bird is constantly going up in elevation. And he's, Azimuth is swinging around uh, more uh, west to easterly. Here's the, this is the plot, the polar plot of what's happening. So that's where the satellite is. Now you see now that he's, he's accepted that. I'm right, I'm dead on him. I'm, he's, I'm right, he's right in the middle of my detection uh, range if you will, a couple, couple of degrees either side. And the next thing to do will be to get a, to get a uh, what do you call it, a radio, and do this with a radio. But this, this uh, project was the sarcnet.org build. Uh, this is a student's amateur radio club or something like that. And they put together this inexpensive rotor project that you that you make yourself. Uh, and I obviously found the, the plans for a, a VHF, UHF uh, uh, Yagi that uses uh, tape measure, because I love tape measure Yagis. I use them all the time for fox hunting and stuff. Now, I made this one very loosey-goosey. That's why things are not quite where they ought to be. There's nothing holding most of these most of these uh, uh, cross members other than the directors. I'm sorry, the driven elements. Not, all of these are loose in holes. I just drilled holes and, you know, stuck the uh, elements in there. But as you can see, 
this guy seems to be doing a pretty good job uh, keeping where it's supposed to be. The hardest part is figuring out, uh, calibrating the magnetic sensor and figuring out how to attach it so it doesn't move around when, you know, if it has any kind of pull on it at all from the wiring or anything. So that, that's part of the, the hardest part. But that's basically what's going on. And you can see she's, uh, she's tracking pretty good. And she's uh, elevation's up pretty high. This is a high one. 58 degrees, almost 60. She's almost straight up. Boy, she's, uh, I mean, 90 degrees uh, is, would be straight up. So pretty close. And now we're coming, he's coming around. You can see it's due east and it's coming around to, uh, coming around to north on the azimuth. And my house north is this way, sort of kind of out that way towards the doorway, this doorway here you can see. But th I think this is going to make listening to birds and listening to people call on birds a lot easier. And my next thing is just to get a, uh, I have a, a diplexer on it so I can hook up a hand talkie. Uh, and, or I could, I, I have separate uh, cabling coming from both the UHF and VHF side. So I could run two radios. Um, I'm not really sure though, without a diplexer, how to protect one radio from the other. I mean, if you're, if you're transmitting on that two meter and that VHF is receiving, I don't know how you avoid blowing out the front end of your VHF radio. Uh, whereas the diplexer kind of protects you from that because it doesn't let the stuff come through. So we shall see. Um, not exactly sure how that works. But anyway, it, it was a neat project. It did take me a, quite a bit of time to build it. Um, and it did take, uh, uh, because a lot of the parts are from China, uh, it did take a long time to get the parts. You know, obviously we've had that problem with deliveries from China. But uh, it's it's free software. This uh, this uses G-Predict is the main software here. And then under the covers, Hamlib is running. And Hamlib is what establishes the connection. It takes that COM port that this thing is running on through the USB and turns it into a TCP IP port. And then G-Predict uses the TCP IP port to go after the... Uh, to go after the rotator. And this rotator implements one of the, the easy rotator two protocol or something like that. It's, it's a very simplistic protocol. And unfortunately, one of the things that doesn't work is I, you probably can't see them, but this says read zero zero, read zero zero for azimuth and elevation. This has the ability to, to ask the um, rotator, where are you right now? Tell me, tell me where you think you are and to display that. But because we're using the uh, the diagnostic port on the uh, the Arduino, uh, we're not able to do both at once. So in order for me to do that, I'd have to hook up a separate serial port and uh, talk to it through the separate serial port, um, which I may do. Uh, I, and I'm also looking at maybe doing it with Wi-Fi. I bought some of those Wi-Fi uh, uh, pieces that you can just lash up to an Arduino and let it talk Wi-Fi. So that might be fun. So in any event, you can see that we're, we're coming in. We're almost at 360 degrees. So we're almost pointing uh, dead north. And you can see the thing is starting to point towards my, uh, towards my hallway door there. But that's basically uh, what was going on. I had a lot of fun putting this project together. It is not a real strong thing. They do have uh, modifications you can make to this so it, it can actually drive big rotors like channel master rotors and stuff like that. Uh, all the same code, all the same uh, connectivity, just different motor drivers and motor sets. But the, the basics of it is all the same. And this is running with just some cheap DC motors, uh, worm gear driven motors that you get from uh, from China. And it's, it's, it's a piece of cake. It was an awful lot of fun to put together. And uh, I'm looking forward to actually trying to talk to some uh, Talk to some satellites, maybe get the thing outdoors and, and do that. My understanding is as long as you have a good time base on the computer, the uh, GPredict software loads up the ephemeris files, and you do not need to be connected to the Internet to use this out in the field, which is something that worried me. So between running this and using a GPS dongle to get accurate time, I, I think this could be a real winner and might be an awful lot of fun. And it certainly beats having to hold on to the end of that uh, Yagi or mounting it on a regular tripod and trying to uh, to do all the all the work with that. So, pretty good stuff. So we're we're coming up on loss of signal here. It should be 
about another minute and 30 seconds, and uh, G Predict says, that's it, you're done. I also told him that he's not allowed to depress the uh, elevation any lower than zero. I mean, there's no sense uh, trying to do ground wave or any of that stuff. I know that that is possible, but I live I live in New England, and there's too many hills and trees around. Uh, anything lower than zero, it just nothing's going to – in fact, I don't think zero is probably very reasonable either. But anything lower than zero is just not uh, – just doesn't make any sense. So here's a just a quick look at this little Sarknet project. I hope you uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, parts and all that stuff. Uh, about a hundred and twenty or thirty dollars uh, for the basic stuff, and then like trying to make that adapter for the uh, for the, for the guy. You know, there's another five or six bucks there with the different couplers that I used. And, you know, depending on what you have for a, a uh, I'm using a light stand, uh, uh, one of those work light stands that you buy from Harbor Freight. I'm, I'm sorry, Home Depot. This is a Home Depot uh, light stand and I took the top of it off. They have a quick disconnect head on it and I, and I took it off and I'm using that instead. So anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed it. And oh, I'll, I'll just wait one more uh, little bit here because what will happen is once it's done tracking the satellite, at the end of every pass, it does what it calls an unwind routine to make sure that it's not taking the, uh, taking the uh, uh, what do you call it, it's the uh, cables around and around and around the shaft. And he does that at the, end of every, at the end of every pass, and that's what he's doing now. So he's actually unwinding the cable from the shaft. And there's a, there's a uh, he keeps track while he's running how many times he's twisted all the way around in one direction. And you can tell him after you hit like 450 degrees of rotation, I want you to stop and come backwards. Oops, sorry. I had something on the table. It just fell off. He grabbed the, the thing, just grabbed the diplexer. So, and I think it, and that threw the sensor off because that the cable that snagged it was the cable for the uh, GPS sensor. But in any event, that's basically what's going on. I hope, I hope you enjoyed, uh, seeing uh, this in action uh, with, a, with the real satellite going over and, and the actual software and everything finally hooked up. I hope you enjoy it. Have yourself a fine afternoon, and thanks for watching.